In our last couple of videos, we've only been talking about preparing ourselves to build a game. So in this video, we're going to start programming our characters to do what they need to do. If you remember, I already set up a scene, which is level one. Level 1A was simply for me to show you how to create a level. Let's double click on level one. What I'm going to do for now is remove all the blocks so that they don't complicate our life. If you go back to the dashboard, what you might see in my actors is I've downloaded another version of that monkey. And what I'm going to do, going back to the scene, is I'm also going to delete the monkey that I made and deal only with this test monkey. And the reason for that is I've already done a lot of programming for my original monkey. And it will get really confusing if I show you some advanced blocks before you've even thought about how to do the simple stuff. So let's add our test monkey to the level and we'll just put him roughly where the other monkey was, like so. Now if we very quickly just test this game, you can see that my test monkey has no programming done to it, so it won't move, it won't jump. So let's just see what happens. Now in this case, well, nothing happens obviously because there's no programming there, so that's good. Now let's try an experiment which is if we move our character up into the sky and then say test the game, let's see what happens. And we can see that the monkey started off high and fell down. So let's figure out how do we do that? Why is the monkey falling down? So let's go into our stencil into level one. So be very careful when I'm talking about all the settings and all the programming, be sure that you look up every so often and figure out, am I talking about the character, the actor, or am I talking about the level? In this case, the level one, I want to show you how to set up your world in a platform game. What we're going to do is go to our physics and we're going to look at gravity. Now, gravity normally is vertical. That's up and down, not left and right. Those are settings for a different style of game. And in this case, I've gone for gravity of 85 down. Now the makers of Stencil say that 85 down will make gravity in your game look like real world gravity or the gravity that you and I are used to. So I'm sticking with that number there. And that's all we need to do. So when we have our character in the level, if we have him in the air like so and we test the game, then the gravity of the level says that this character has to fall down because of gravity. So let's just wait for that to come up so you can see. Yeah, so that works just perfectly. So no matter what the monkey does, if there's no ground underneath him, he will fall down to wherever the ground is. And if there's no ground, he'll just fall straight out of the game. So that's a really nice setting because now we don't have to think about programming gravity. So let's just think about how do we move this monkey left and right. So let's now go to our test monkey. And what we're going to do is go to the events. We're going to add an event, basics, and when updating. Now, there's three kind of events. When creating is when you press the test game. At that moment, whatever you put in that programming will happen but once. Drawing is basically changing something about the character or putting some writing on the screen. So we don't normally deal with that. We'll talk about that uh, down the road somewhere. When updating is basically the programming that is constantly checked. So are you pressing left? Are you pressing right? Are you jumping? So all those things that the game should check again and again is in the when updating. Now, it is a really good idea to start labeling your programs or your events because you're going to end up with about 10, 20, 30 of them. If you don't name them, you're going to get really lost. So this one is going to be a very simple move left and right script. And it's a really simple one. So let's just go through this. On the right, we've got all our blocks. If you've used Scratch, nothing here should surprise you. What we're going to do is basically put two ifs in. The ifs are going to be from a user input. So we're going to say if the player is pressing this key or this key. So if the player is pressing choose control left and if the player is pressing right, like so. What we're going to do then is go to the actors tab, the motion, and we're going to set the X speed and set the X speed. So what we'll do is we'll say set the X speed to minus 10. That's going left and set the speed to 10. 
So that's your X speed, which is left and right. Y, of course, is up and down. Let's just test this game very quickly. And you can see that my character now moves kind of slowly, but is moving just fine. So that's a really simple way to start our game. Our character is moving left and right. So let's think about speeding that monkey up. Let's make it minus 20 and 20. Just quickly test that game and see what happens. And of course, because we put 20, we've doubled the speed. It's quite a nice looking movement. Kind of when you let go, the monkey slows down like so. So that's a cool start to a game. It's not really so exciting right now, but it's the start of something that's going to get exciting. So let's put in a jump, which is again going to be a basics updating one. Let's put in the title jump. When updating, we're going to kind of do the same thing we did for the moving left and right. We're going to do an if. We're going to grab a control. This time we're going to say if up is down. I know that sounds stupid, but if up is pressed on the keyboard, we're going to go to the actors motion. We're going to set the Y speed. And let's go for minus 20 here. Let's just quickly test that game. So we've got our left and right moving. And we've got a jump now. So let's see what's going on. And here we have it left and right, and a jump. Well, the jumps kind of not so good, because it's really not that high. So let's just go back and change that value to minus 40. Like so test the game again. And here we go. Yeah, that's pretty good for a jump. Now you're going to notice some problems. So Moving left and right, although it's got that kind of cool slowing down and speeding up, it just doesn't feel right. If if you play games, especially the old fashioned games like Mario or Sonic, you'll know that when you let go of your mouse, the monkey really should go a little bit faster and then slow down. And he's not doing that. And if I press jump, it's a good jump. But you'll notice that if I keep pressing the up button, I actually can get my character to fly. Now that's a great superpower for your character to have. But my game is an old fashioned platform game and the characters, as you know, don't fly in that. So as I said before, every time we add something to the game, we will cause ourselves new problems that we have to solve. And that's not something that you should be scared of. That's actually something that's cool about programming and especially programming games. So every time we solve a problem, we're going to give ourselves a slightly new problem that we have to solve. So in this case, we have to fix the movement. Because it's I'm not happy with that. And secondly, we have to fix this jump because that is ridiculous. A flying monkey is not what I want in this game.